Hey, so glad to have you guys back. I am here. I've got something a little bit different from what I normally do. I've wanted to do a video like this for a long time and I've thought about it a couple of years and I've decided we're just gonna go with it. It's the holiday season and I'm gonna do a FPV Christmas present list. That's right. And I'm not going all out. I'm not gonna say DJI goggles or Tyrannus this or Mamba or like anything crazy because if you are into FPV, you've probably already got the controller you want. You've probably already got the goggles you want. I, I'm guessing you're building the drones that you want, so it's not like somebody can come in and buy you a present in that vein that's gonna really make you happy. What I bet there are a few things that you don't have that make your FPV experience better. So. My bet is that you're watching this because you're wondering what you're gonna get yourself for Christmas after nobody else buys you any FPV stuff. But if you're here checking out this video for your significant other, then props to you and your, who, your significant other is a very, very lucky individual indeed. That's all I'm saying. So without wasting any more time, we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna go from lowest price range all the way up to just ridiculously expensive. Most of the items on this list are either tools or pieces of gear that really enable you to go further with your FPV experience or make it just easier on a day-to-day -day experience. Um, a lot of these items are things that I actually carry in my pocket every single day, whether I'm flying or not, because more than likely I'm gonna end up flying at some point in the day and I'm gonna want it. So let's get right down to the list. The first item on my list is something that I think every FPV pilot should be carrying in their pocket. This is part of my EDC. It has always been and will always be, and that is a prop tool. Let's face it, we all crash. We all have to change out our props. You should probably be doing it more often than you already are. Don't fly with your janky props, that's all I'm saying. But the tools that I use, I've got two options for you here. If you want to go the fancy FPV, like be super cool route, the thing to, that I would recommend is this ethics prop tool. I love it. It's got a one way bearing. It'll only spin in one direction. The other direction, it is tightening or loosening your prop, depending on which side, silver to, to loosen, black to tighten. This one is the original that's two millimeter and two and a half millimeter. Uh, they have a new version, which has a two millimeter and a one and a half. I would prefer that because most of my gear has two mil for the frame, one and a half mil for uh, camera hardware. I don't really have any stuff that I use these days that's two and a half mil, but this was a prop tool that I carried quite a bit. However, it's not what I'm carrying today. Now you can get one of these for $14.99. So it's an extremely affordable option, and trust me, they will be happy with it. It is kind of a one-stop FPV tool. If you've got this in your pocket, chances are you can fix whatever issues you have. The prop tool that I do carry on a daily basis is even cheaper though, and that is this Husky uh, eight millimeter ratcheting wrench. It's got a ratchet in the side so you can tighten and loosen. You just point the open-ended wrench towards the direction you want it to tighten or loosen and flip it over to do the other direction. And the reason that I've gone, this is what the first, one of the first prop tools I ever got. I found it at Home Depot, $7.27. And um, I carried it for years and years. I then got Mr. Steele's ethics prop tool. I love this thing, but the problem that I have with it is it's big and has a lot of angles and it tends to poke me when I carry it in my pocket. And like I said, I like to keep these tools in my pocket all the time. If you're gonna keep your prop tool in your FPV bag, then the ethics prop tool is a great tool to have. If you want it to be in your pocket, so after you walk all the way across the empty field to pick up your drone that you just crashed, um, this is the one that I would want in my pocket. So. Two options, both of them very, very affordable. Up next on my list is going to be a battery checker. If you're flying FPV, you're dealing with batteries. You got lipos for your goggles, you got lipos for the drone, you got lipos on lipos on lipos on lipos. And let's face it, you're probably carrying other things that need battery power than just your uh, goggles and your drones. Maybe your phone, maybe your tablet, maybe your controller is about to die. So I like to use a battery checker that's got the ability to 
charge those devices. And the one that I like for that is the ISDT, what is this guy? The Battery Go BG8S. Um, it's good for checking up to 8S batteries. It's got uh, XT, let's see. Let's make sure I'm focusing here. It's got XT60 on the side, balance port. It'll give you the individual cells. Um, I'm gonna grab a battery, plug it in. Da, 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 da. If you've not seen this thing, I don't know what like hole you've been living in. It works great, lasts a long time. You get the overall battery voltage. It gives you like a fuel gauge telling you how full it thinks the battery is. It tells you individual soul. <laughs> individual cell voltage. Um, that's really the tool that I use the most is that individual cell voltage, which tells you like 3.7, dead. 4.2, fully charged. It also has a USB port on the side here. That USB port is going to let you charge your cell phone, let you charge your, uh, your controller or any other device that you have with you. So I like having this battery checker because it gives me options on ensuring that none of my gear is dying while I'm out in the field. I used to carry a much smaller uh, battery checker from Progressive RC that I don't think they even make anymore and it was kind of like unenclosed, like exposed PCB and it was falling apart. This one takes up a lot more real estate in my pocket and so I've actually switched away from this. You're gonna see this trend over and over. I keep choosing the thing that is smaller, the thing that is easier to carry in my pocket and the thing that is in a lot of times cheaper. And in this case, I use this TransTech battery checker. It uh, has a black and white LCD screen. It only tells me individual cell voltage. It does not tell me uh, overall, actually, does it tell overall voltage? It does on the side there, 23.31. But none of that fancy fuel gauge, none of the USB charging. I have another device that I've actually been using for that. You can't even see it because it's so scratched up. I need to get a new one. Uh, but uh, trust me, that's just because I've got a light here. In the real world or even during bright daylight, I can still read the screen. I think it might have a screen protector that's scratching up. I need to get that fixed or get a new one. They're like $15 and I've been carrying this one for over a year. It's got a hard metal case. I've been carrying it in my pocket for all of a year. You can see how scratched up this case is uh, and the thing is still just performing great. I love it. Uh, and you can get these for only $16. Now, the ISDT battery checker is $39.99 as just checking. Um, if I was gonna have only one I'm, and no other way to turn all of my LiPos into a uh, USB charger, I would probably go with the ISDT and keep it in my bag. But if you already have an ISDT and you don't carry it around and you want something that's more pocketable, this guy is amazing. Now we'll get to what I'm actually using to charge USB devices in a minute. But up next is another item. Now this isn't as FPV related, but it is something I carry every day. It's something that I use a ton of times, uh, even when I'm flying, um, and that's gonna be a flashlight. <laughs> Now, I mentioned in my recent bag review that I've been carrying this little guy here, the Olight i3e. Um, it's just a single AAA light. It's not crazy bright. It does the job. Um, it, you can find dropped screws that rolled under the car, for instance. The bigger light, uh, which is why I'm not carrying it, is because it's not as pocketable, is this Warrior Mini 2. Now, the Mini 2 is great. It's got like three or four different brightness, uh, brightness levels, uh, moonlight, you can lock the button out, it's got uh, immediate push to just absurd brightness levels. Um, it charges via a little magnetic dongle that just connects at the back. Uh, it's, it's a great light, they come in a bunch of different colors. This is actually Camilla, my wife's light. Let me see there, it's like stone and blue. Uh, she recently got that. We like them so much we keep getting them. And I was looking to see how much the i3e is and I got totally distracted on Olight's website here because they now have the i wait 
I1R2. Oh my gosh, that's like the worst naming convention ever. But this little guy is a USB-C rechargeable, uh, brighter than the AAA, smaller than the AAA light, goes on your keychain and puts out 180 lumens. So if you want something small and pocketable so that you can spot your drone in the tree after sunset because you crashed on your last pack and it's stuck up in the tree, this is a great option. If you get this for your friend, your loved one that FPVs, I guarantee it's gonna see use and have a place in their bag every day. And the amazing thing is this I2R, oh my gosh, I can't even get the name right. This I1R2 is available right now for five dollars on Olight's website. I think there's only a few more days left, but I, at the publishing of this video, it should still be available at that price. This next one is actually one of the newer additions to my gear that I carry on the regular. Now, it's not something that I carry in my pocket. It's a little bit too big for that. It's not used quite often enough to justify having a spot in my pocket, but I definitely use it every day that I go out and fly, and it has totally taken over the USB charging feature of my ISDT checker. In fact, right now, it is being used to charge the microphone on my camera setup, and that that is the Speedy B V3. Now this can be used as a battery checker. You see I've got a 2S battery plugged in right now and uh you can see I've got a 2S battery plugged in right now and it's reading out that 8.2 volts. Now the USB port on this guy is a beast. It's gonna put out a whopping 30 watts. Now that is as much as my super fancy schmancy anchor wall charger for, that I use for my phone. This will charge your phone, your tablet, your laptop like so fast. Uh, I can't believe how amazing it is. It does get a little bit warm, but the functionality of the USB charger alone justifies the $35 price tag on this thing. I know we're gonna talk about all the cool other things that it does, don't worry, but the USB charger is so freaking good, I cannot say it enough. That has relegated this ISDT checker to being like a backup checker that basically lives in my battery bag. I've got the, uh, the TransTech that stays in my pocket, I've got this guy that pulls uh, USB charging duty and more, and then, uh, yeah, that's it. Now, let's talk about what else this does. If you are not aware, the Speedy B V3 allows you to connect wirelessly to your flight controller to program it. You plug in a battery, you pull out whichever type of USB uh, on here that you have. It's not, this isn't a keychain lanyard, this is actually a USB cable. It's got USB C on one side and USB micro on the other. So if you've got a uh, flight controller with a micro con USB connector, you pull the micro end out. If you got a flight controller with a USB-C, you pull the USB-C end out. And you plug, oh my gosh, I can't even get it undone. You plug that into your flight controller and then plug a battery into this guy. And using the Speedy B app on your phone, you are able to completely configure Betaflight, Emu Flight, um, and iNav, all three of those you can configure. The newest version even provides uh, USB pass-through support for programming your ESC. What else could it do? You can flash beta flight. Not only can you pull targets for beta flight from the configurator, you can pull targets from the website. For instance, I've been using the Matek H743, which the uh, the targets for that are not available on the um, in beta flight. You have to go to their website, pull the latest build. Uh, I guess it's not fully supported. I don't know. I'm not going to get into all of that and how that works. But if you've ever had to do that, what you'll do is you'll go on your phone to the website for the product page, find the firmware, hold down on it, select copy the address, and then go into uh, the Speedy B app and you tell it download from the web and it'll ask you for the address where they can find the target for your flight controller and it'll download it and then it'll flash it right onto your flight controller. Like it's the functionality of this thing is amazing. It's got black box viewer, um, like so many different things. Now, that being said, programming a flight controller 
in the field is not something I do every day. I was like traveling for work like a couple of weeks ago and built one of the drones in a hotel and I ended up actually flashing it and programming it only using SpeedyB and my phone just to see if I could do it. And I was able to do it, no problem. So it's pretty sweet. You can even get into the CLI to do some more advanced stuff. Um, I definitely like having this around. If you find yourself in the field and you've like ripped a, the motor lead off of your flight controller, you can remap your LED pin or something. Like it, it's absurd. Anything you can do in Betaflight, you can do with this thing. It's awesome, love it. So the next item on my list is something that I've kind of gone back and forth with. I really like having it, uh, but the original version that I carried was a little bit pricey. Uh, it was like $80, and that is the TPT slide, or the Titanium Pocket Tool. Now what it is, is basically a holder for a utility knife blade. Now, I've changed it over. I don't even have the TPT slide. You may have seen me show it off in the backpack video, but I lost it. And it's the second $80 tool that I've lost. Now, I'm usually really good with my pocket stuff. Uh, I'm good with sunglasses and don't lose it, but there's something about that knife. I use it so much that I have lost two of them now, and I can't bring myself to buy another $80 version. So I recently found this guy, and it's it's like, I've got a black blade in there right now, so it's a little bit hard to see. It is the Giltec Ruck S. Now, they have a little bit more heavy duty version that's a little bit more. This one is available for $20. It's one piece aluminum for the S version. You basically push in the blade and you're able to slide it out. Now. I've always used hobby knives in the past uh, for cutting heat shrink. You can do it, use it to trim wires. You can use it to pop out the pins on these connectors if you need to repin an ESC or repin the connectors for a camera or VTX. If you've been doing FPV for any length of time, you know what a pain that can be. It's way easier with a hobby knife or a utility blade. This one, uh, Camilla's lives, she got it right here. Camilla's lives right here on her keys. It's fantastic for opening packages. You can see a little bit better on hers that uh, the um, blade in there. Uh, it's just held in with pressure. You can easily take out your blade and replace it like so. Uh, it has two locking positions that it will lock at. Wait, oh, I got it in front of the blade. So it's got two locking positions, fully extended, and then your like little halfsies if you wanna open the box and not uh, cut into the package contents. So uh, this guy is super handy. I, it's also my new favorite little fidget thing. I just try to slide it without having it catch on anything. Slide it out, slide it back. I don't know, it spins in my fingers, hold it and it, 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 a million different ways to fidget with it, but having that knife on you all the time, and it's always sharp. Whenever it gets dull, just put a new blade in. Uh, flip the blade around. You get two uh, edges for blades. And if you accidentally carry it to the airport, guess what? Just chuck the blade, throw it away. It's a couple dollars to get a new one. If even that, it's like a couple dollars for a pack of them. Uh, so I love this knife. I use it for a million different things and I'm going to continue. Now that they're $20 and I've found a $20 replacement for my former favorite $80 tool, uh, I'm just gonna keep a stockpile of them so I never run out anymore. And funny enough, when I started looking into these, I looked up Giltec on uh, Instagram. Guess who follows them? Josh Bixler. Guess who cuts a ton of foam board? Josh Bixler. I bet he would use the crap out of this to build some foamy planes. I'm just saying. Anyways, <laughs> Bixler, why are you holding the Giltec Ruck from us? Let me know about these things. I need to know this. All right. Whew. All right. We got our utility knife for 20 to $85. $85 for the TPT slide, and that's from Big Idea Designs. I've got another Big Idea Design tool uh, coming up in our lineup as well, but uh, I'll show you the product page right here since I don't currently have one, and uh, it works. It has a little bit of a nub on the side that you're able to slide um, to extend the, nut, the blade and pull it back. It's a little bit harder to replace the blade on this. I was always a little afraid that I was gonna cut myself, 
uh, it would end up giving like putting big dents in my thumb. You can do it, but it just frustrated me. The Giltec Ruck changing the blade is super easy. There we go. That's how it normally goes. Uh, all right. I'll also throw a link in the description to the black blades on Amazon. Uh, I just like black things. So black blade, black knife, uh, all blacked out. The next item on my list is the one thing on this list that I don't actually own right now. Uh, I have used this. I thought that it was gonna be a trivial thing that's like, eh, maybe it's for me, maybe it's not. Uh, but a friend of mine has it. It is the Toolkit RC P200 Mini 200 Watt 10 Amp Power Supply. Oh my God, that's a complicated name. It's the Toolkit RC P200, the power supply. Now, I've never really wanted a bench power supply until I watched Bardwell's video on it, and I was like, ooh, that's kind of nice. After having it and using it for a build and test of a drone, oh my goodness, it is so handy. So the way this thing works is you're able to dial in the exact voltage that you wanna supply, set a current limit, or measure the current that a system is using. Uh, any number of types of tests that you can think that you would want to do. Like I now know how much voltage my uh, Vista is pulling because I put it my drone on the power supply, measured the current that it was drawing with the whole thing disarmed and the Vista powered on, shut the Vista off using the voltage, the VTX kill switch of that of that flight controller. And I was able to see the current difference between the two. So I know how much current does a Vista draw when it's sitting idle. Uh, just, uh, is that useful? Probably not. Is the fact that I can limit the current on the power supply to 0.1 amps so that I don't fry an ESC on a fresh build? That is invaluable. So I really like this thing. If you are wanting to, it's got, powers a USB device, it powers any DC. It's not gonna be like any crazy amperage, but the functionality that you get from this, I guarantee you don't have one. I'm willing to bet that you don't have one, unless you're just that guy that buys every single thing. Like I'm that guy and I don't have one. So this is on my short list. It's $99.99, but it is something that will live on your bench and it will see a ton of use. Uh, if your husband, wife, whoever it is that you, that FPVs that you're buying gifts for uh, were to receive this, they will be stoked, trust me. It is a luxury item that most people don't have, but once you have it, there's no going back. I built one drone with, in the presence of one and now it's on my must have lifts. I'm gonna have one, like it may be the Christmas present I get myself, let's be honest. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> Number seven on my list is something that I mentioned in the bag review, but I didn't do it justice. The camera never focused on it. You guys probably didn't even know what the heck I was talking about. And that is the bit bar inline, also from Big Idea Designs in titanium. This is like one of the coolest things. They've had a bunch of different tools that are for driving bits, um, but they always looked a little bit clunky and it, it was, they take too much room in your pocket, etc. When I saw this, I knew I had to have it. I got on the pre-orders. Now you'll see here, we got something that is smaller than your average pen. It's got a clip, so it clips into your pocket well, but what's hidden inside, we have a driver. We got a bit up here and we have two bits that are stored in the handle. Now, if you just want a straight driver, drop it in. You've got a screwdriver. Inside of here, I've got, let's see, which one is which? Pop this guy out. We can pull out the one of the other bits. They're held in magnetically, so you're not gonna accidentally drop it. You can put in whatever bits you want. Right here, we got a two mil driver. And now you got a two mil driver to take your drone apart. You got a, one pesky bolt that you can't get enough torque on. Guess what? Now you got a T-bar. Bam! Still can't get enough torque? We got an L-bar so we can get all the leverage. Look at that. And the magnets keep it from falling apart. Stays in. When you're done with it, no pokey in the pocket. Clips on to your pocket. Like this thing, and it just looks super sexy. Tell me that titanium doesn't look sexy. It looks amazing. <sighs> I love this thing. It's so awesome. It's a great tool to have in your pocket. So I think that is gonna do it for the pocket 
bowl items. If you look here, the things I say that I carry every day in my pocket, I've got my prop tool, I've got my battery checker, I've got my flashlight, I have my knife, and my driver. So now I have the ability to take apart a drone, cut parts that are on the inside, check the battery, change the props, and find it in the dark. Like, all of that capability in I can't hold it in front of the camera. I'm gonna have to do a B-roll shot. All of that capability right here in my hands. Like, it's absurd. And it fits in the pocket and these things just disappear in my pocket. I probably need to get a pocket organizer at that point, but then I gotta take out the pocket organizer and like, it, pocket organizers are just too nerdy for me. I know some of you EDC people are gonna say they're like amazing, but it's just, it's, it's a bridge too far in my book. <laughs> okay. The Bitbar inline comes in at $105. I know that is pricey for a driver, but to have a driver that fits in your pocket, carries three bits, isn't gonna poke you, is put together and made out of titanium and looks this good, it was worth it. I got in on the pre-order, so I was able to pick it up for $80, but if you wanna get one now, it's gonna run you $105. But it is a fantastic tool, even at that price. The next item that's on my list isn't so much about wrenching on your drones as it is more of the backside. What are you gonna do after you go and fly? You've made all of this sweet, sweet footy with your GoPro and now you gotta put it somewhere. Where I go to with my footage is are these drives. I love solid state, especially when I'm on a trip. They're super small, they're very rugged, it's hard to damage them, and they carry a ton of data. The one that is my go-to is this guy right here. It's the SanDisk Extreme. I've got it in the two terabyte version. Uh, they even put like a carabiner, like it's all cool. <laughs> but it, if the feel of it is rubberized, um, it's been banged around in suitcases, you name it. I actually use this particular one to hold the library for Final Cut. So all of my edits are done on this. If I when I used to have two computers, I could take the an edit from the laptop and move it to the desktop or from the desktop to the laptop. I've got another solid state drive that I use for storing all of my footage, but this particular one is for the library. If you are making content with your FPV drone, I highly recommend you get yourself a solid state drive. It's gonna save you so much time in exporting your footage. It's gonna save you so much time in the editing process. And let's face it, your computer probably doesn't have two terabytes. Now, these are available from 500 gigabytes all the way up to four terabytes. The 500 gigabyte drive starts at $87.99, but let's face it, that's not enough to really do a ton with. The four terabyte is all the way up at $500, and four terabytes is just way more than you really need. I feel like the two terabyte is really the sweet spot, but a one terabyte drive would be enough to get you by to do your edits from or dump all of the footage that you're on trip. Hell, the 500 gigabyte is going to be enough to dump all the footage from a trip. I, if I'm really pushing it, will put in 100 gigabytes of content from GoPros and A cams and B cams and all the things on a given fly day. So 500 terab 500 gigabytes is more than enough to get you through that day of flying. Two terabytes is enough to have multiple edits going in Final Cut at one time. So one terabyte is... It's this sliding scale. Purchase based off of your need. You know better than I do. Up next is another tool for working on drones. Now I know I've already got like two types of drivers and two types of prop tools and all this other stuff, but this one, if you were doing a ton of builds, it is gonna save your wrists. That is the Sane Smart ES120. They're already up to the 126 that I see now, uh, and you can get the 126 for $110 on GetFPV. Now, this guy is a electric screwdriver. I like to joke that it's my sonic screwdriver. If you're a fan of Doctor Who, you know what I'm talking about. It just looks so like futuristic and like cool. The way that it's gonna work is you press and hold the button. So we got a button on it, press the button, and then twist it in the direction you want it to go. And it will just 
drive in that direction. You can set it to where the speed is variable, all of this stuff. I just have mine going to the max speed. I don't care. Uh, I'm not gonna fine tune it. The other thing, it's not got a ton of torque. So you're not gonna torque down at your bolts with this guy. Um, but the nice thing is once it stops and isn't being electric, uh, it locks in place. So you can easily use it just as a driver to get that last bit tightened down or to break the Loctite as you're taking something out and then use the electric function when you've got a 30 millimeter M3 bolt through your flight stack that you have to unscrew and it's just and then your screw is out. It comes in super handy, saves my wrist. Um, I love this thing for taking top plates off, putting everything back together, building new drones. Uh, it is invaluable. Do I break it out every time I'm doing maintenance? No, because it's overkill. But if I'm doing a build, I guarantee you this thing is on my bench and getting use. I know Tommy is a believer in it uh, as well. Like once you have one of these, it's it's a game changer and you're not gonna want it out of your FPV bag. It even comes in this little case that holds uh, six bits. So I've got a Phillips head, an M2, an M2 and a half, an M1 and a half, uh, two types of Phillips head, I think, maybe three types, and a flat head, like more than enough bits to do everything that you need uh, in there. Love this guy. Okay, <sighs> what else do we have? I think that only leaves one thing. That's right, <laughs> the one, the final, and this one is a little bit over the top. I'll admit that it's a little bit, it's a lot, it's pricey, <laughs> It's big, it's bulky. Do you need it? No. Do you want it? You probably do. <laughs> it is the Axis Flying HD box. This one that I have is the version with the fan. They sell two versions. So the version without the fan is $209. The version with the fan is $245. Now, if you don't know what this is, you probably fly analog. <laughs> Let's face it, this is for your DJI FPV pilots. What it's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to take the, with a USB cable plugged into your goggles, it will give you the ability to put HDMI out of your uh, FPV feed. I know what you're saying. There's a million other ways to do this. There's FPV out that will let you do it on your Windows PC, your Mac, your Linux computer. There's the DigiView to do it on an Android phone or tablet. There's the smart controller. There's the Cosmo streamer if you wanna go your own route and build a Raspberry Pi to do it. There are so many ways to do this. This is a completely unnecessary piece of kit. But if you want, a a clean and sexy looking device that gives you the HDMI out. There's basically this and the DJI Smart Controller. The DJI Smart Controller is $700. So this is a steal compared to that. Now, can you program a Raspberry Pi to do the same thing? Yeah, sure, sure you can. But is that Pi gonna be like hardened and like I could drop, this is a hunk of metal. I feel like I could throw this at the wall and it is going to be fine. Now. It has, it does more than just gives you the DJI FPV feed. It's got Betaflight built in. You power it off of USB, plug it into a HDMI screen. If you have a touch screen, you can drive Betaflight with a touch screen. I think it's totally overkill for that. If you want Betaflight handy, get a SpeedyB. If you're an iPhone user, if you're Android, you can just run SpeedyB and plug it into your, uh, straight into your phone. Uh, I use iPhone, so I need the, I need this guy, but it's okay. Uh, I could use this, it's overkill. They do have a screen, that screen is touch screen, you'll be able to drive beta flight, but the screen's gonna run you another 130 to $210, depending on the screen size you get. There's an 8.9 and a 15.6. Am I gonna get that? No, I'm using this to capture the footage or to share it to a TV. Plug it in, let the family watch. Um, it's awesome, but it is definitely overkill. But if you want it, you, you kind of want it, don't you? <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So I love this thing. Uh, I have used it multiple times. I'm not gonna plug it in. There are plenty of reviews out there. Um, it's got, you power it off of USB on the back. It's got a display port out. It's got an HDMI out. Uh, you plug in your goggles to this USB port right here. 
Da, 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 da. And then on the front, you also have more USB ports. Well, why would you need even more? You can plug in a mouse and keyboard. It's got a web browser. It's basically a little Linux computer in a box. Uh, there's the ability to do uh, plug in SD cards. I don't know what the internal storage on this is. There may even be enough storage to dump your uh, flight footage. It doesn't say how much. It's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, like it's a computer. Uh, I'm really kind of curious when somebody is gonna root one of these and just start using it as their desktop and editing videos on it. Like you could totally do that with it. And probably not got enough horsepower under the hood, but you know, if you, if you wanted to force it, you probably could. Whew. All right, well, I've been talking long enough. I've given you 10 options for Christmas presents for FPV. I've given you 10 gadgets that you're gonna now want. And if you want to pick up any of the items that you've seen in this video, please check them out. Links are in the description. Those links are affiliate links. They do help me out. I appreciate all the help that I can get. Uh, if you did like this video, also click that like button, share it with your friends, because I bet the rest of your FPV crew is looking for the newest little thing to make their FPV experience that much better. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit the like button. We will catch you next time. I got more videos planned for you guys and uh, we'll see you then. All right, bye. Okay, <laughs> I have to be louder. So I hope that this isn't too loud to wake the baby up. <laughs> but I gotta, I can't like do, I can't do a video like this when my energy's never like this normally. It just won't work. <laughs>